Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Dental Up Podcast, brought to you by Keating Dental Arts, a full-service, award-winning dental laboratory. Each week, you'll learn tips and techniques from real-world dentists, bringing you in-depth interviews, motivating stories, current events, and sports. Here's your host, Sean Keating. Hey everyone, Sean here. Welcome to another episode of the Dental Up Podcast. Our guest this week is a graduate of the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville School of Dentistry, awarded a fellowship in the dental organization for conscious sedation and practicing from Paducah, Kentucky. Please welcome Dr. William Walden, DDS. How's it going, Dr. Walden? Going great, Sean. Uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, man. Thank you so much, dude. I know how busy you are, and I know we don't have a whole lot of time today. You're squeezing me in between patients, but, dude, man, thank you so much. And uh, I always like to start off talking a little bit about sports, and I know you're a Ram fan, and you kind of were bummed that they left you there uh, in St. Louis, uh, but uh, you're, you're a Ram fan for sure, and uh, we got him out here now. What do you think, what do you think about him this year? Are you still going to pull for the Rams? or no absolutely you know they've signed a, a lot of their players and they've got some new players and uh, of course they had a new coach last year and uh, i think they're going to be exciting if they can get uh, donald signed and uh uh, so yeah, I'm uh, uh, I'm hoping hoping for the best. Yeah, they just signed a girly to a big contract, like sixty million. But yeah, uh, Donald, man, they, they don't they don't got him signed yet. But uh, I think they will. But it's just great to have them back. They're kind of an exciting team with the new quarterback, and just they got some of those uh, Sue from. Uh, I, I think he came from Miami, but he was real big in Detroit and then a couple cornerbacks. But, yeah, we're excited, and uh, it just starts today in uh, Irvine. We have uh, UC Irvine, and they're, uh, they practice, preseason practice here now, so it's just right around the corner. So as soon as I get done with my little podcast with you, I'm going to drive on down and – take my tie off and roll my sleeves up and go watch a practice here. Uh, so uh, we're, oh, that ex- sounds wonderful. Yeah, we're excited for sure, man. I'm ready, I'm uh, ready for football. Uh, I'm a big St. Louis Cardinal baseball fan and our season's not going too well. So yeah. I'm ready for football now. Oh, I bet you. And you know, it's hard to believe that a week from today, I think we got the bears and the Ravens next Thursday, starting off preseason football, man. So it's already uh, amongst us. So it'll give us something to do to go hit the pizza parlor or, you know, our, our own little uh, man caves. Or a lot of us have our football rituals, but uh, I get excited when football comes around. I just love it. I run my dang uh, dental lab like a football team. I mean, I, I just – I do. I, you know, I got my front office. I got my defensive backs. I got my quarterback, special teams. And I, you know, grew up playing football, and I, it's, it's how I run my business. And I've been doing it 33 years in the field. And I just kind of, you know, learned a lot with teamwork, commitment. You know, you're only as strong as your weakest link, the whole thing. But uh, it's kind of weird, but it works for me, and uh, <laughs> I love it. But uh, what about you in, like, high school? Did you, did you, what sports did you do? And uh, tell me a little bit about that. I, I played football. I was, uh, I was a quarterback on the football team, yeah. played baseball, basketball, ran track. And uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I was a good athlete, but not a great athlete, you know, and uh, – uh, but I, I, I loved it. I was I was fast. I could I could run fast. So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you talk about teamwork. You know, football. One one player can't win a win a championship. Can't win a game. And uh, you know, that's the ultimate team sport. And so many people, you know, after after you leave football, whether you don't play in college or after after that, you know, you miss it because it, yeah. it is such a great team sport. And everybody has to work in harmony, yes. much like a dental practice. Absolutely. It's, I remember my coach always saying, we have to be a cohesive unit, a cohesive unit. I didn't even know what cohesive meant back then, but it's like we all work together, you know, we all win together, we all lose together, and it's a, it's a great thing. And, uh, you know, I just um, – I'm turning around and looking on my wall right now is a picture of Vince Lombardi, and it says what it takes to be number one. And uh, so sometimes for self-motivation and for – you know, to keep you pumping, I'll, I'll read Vince's uh, speech there, and it's it's great. Oh yeah, he's he's just freaking a, a legend for sure. And I remember I used to always wear this shirt. Uh, football doesn't um, build character; it reveals it. And so it's kind of a 
it's kind of neat, you know. Um, it's done us well through the years. I got some aches and pains from it, but I was from like I did too. I did the basketball, baseball, track, and I was actually in gymnastics too. Believe it or not, I did that for four years, and uh, cause my older brothers all did gymnastics, so I was a big high bar man and uh, vaulting. But uh, that was a few pounds ago. I couldn't do any of that stuff nowadays, man. I think of it now, and I was like, that's crazy doing double back flips off that high bar. And I didn't know how to land them, but uh, I did it every time. I just had balls and went for it. And uh, so I see some of my guys in reunions that go, man, you're the craziest dude in gymnastics. And uh, we all just watch you in amazement. And I'm like, yeah, I just really didn't know what I was doing, but I went for it. <laughs> uh, well, cool, man. Let's dental up now, Dr. Walden. Now, tell me, why did you get into dentistry? And at what point did you think, I want to be a dentist? Uh, I didn't grow up thinking necessarily when I was younger that I, I was wanting to be a dentist. I knew I wanted to do something in the healthcare field, you know, go, go to medical school, dental school, do something like that. And I was at the University of Kentucky, and my roommate was wanting to go to dental school. And so after after my second year there, or I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put an application in and see what happens. And so they, I put it in, they took me, and off I went. You know, <laughs> I, I got in early. And uh, so uh, and then in, in, in dental school, uh, uh you know, I, I did some uh, research with the cancer program at the in the medical school, and we were dealing with some head and neck tumors and doing some uh, assays on there. And I did that for two summers, and because I need I needed to, you know, have some spending money for my dates and stuff oh. like that. <laughs> I think they paid me a thousand dollars each summer. But anyway, so you know, I was thinking about med school, and uh, we graduated from dental school, and uh, uh, I went to Europe with about six uh, six people. We uh, had I had a little bit of money left over from my student loan, and and you, you took your board exams, and you didn't know if you passed or not for about six weeks. So we went over there, and I got over there and got chilled out and said, you know, I think I'm ready to go start. And so <laughs> I, I remember before my senior year, I had to work with a dentist, and, and I came back to Bazooka and worked with him. And he told me, he said, if you want to come back, you know, just let me know. You know, he said, I'm busy enough. We can keep you busy. So uh, I got back from Europe, and I called him up and said, I think I want to come home and go to work. So uh, I didn't actually work for him. We uh, – he, he's in a building that uh, he could knock out. We knocked out a wall. And I put me an operatory in, and I paid for it and, and got my own employee. And uh, I was, did that for about three months. And then uh, another dentist called me and said that he was going back to prosthodontic school and wanted to know if I wanted to take over his practice. And so uh, I went and met with him. And then, sure enough, uh, in February of uh, 1984, I, I moved out and took over his practice. And uh, he stayed there three or four months until he went to school. And, and uh uh, the previous owners of the practice have been two brothers, and they've been practicing there for about 40, since the 40s, 40s and 50s. Okay. So it was, it was an old practice, and, uh, uh, it, you know, it needed a lot of work. And so, I, I you know, I, I, I worked hard, and, you know, uh, you know, but I, I never, I didn't have a passion. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't have a mentor. And so uh, it was in 1995, and I, I felt like I was just kind of spinning my wheels. And uh, I, I saw this about a dental boot camp, Walter Haley. Okay. And so I signed up to go to dental boot camp in January of 1995. And I remember the course was $2,500. Oh, and I was the local Rotary president. And their their annual conference was going to be in Nice, France. And and, oh, uh, and I wanted to take my wife and go there. Kind of was a second honeymoon. But I said, I can't do both. And so I thought, well, for $2,500, either one of them is going to make me money and, and make me happy, or one is just going to give me a vacation. So, uh I, I signed up for the dental boot camp, and I put it on a credit card and paid it over three months. And uh, it was dental boot camp on the road, and it was in St. Louis. And we got there for the weekend, and uh, uh, I said, if I'm spending $2,500, I'm going to sit on the front row and get all the information I can. <laughs> cool. And my wife went with me, and she sat on the back row. <laughs> and so I sat next to a dentist from uh, St. Louis, and we sat together all weekend. And, and he, uh, he, he was 10, 15 years older than me, and he just kind of – uh, took me under his arm and said, "You're going to do great. And, you know, you just got to implement. You got to do what they tell you to do." And so I listened to Mac Lee and Walter Haley and Jolene Jackson all weekend, and and uh, I bought uh, uh, Mac Lee's uh, tapes he had on periodontal disease. And being an older practice, uh, you know, we didn't even, we we probed a few teeth, we took bite wings, and that was about it. No kidding. And so I came back and I said, "I got to get in gear here." And uh, so I started doing what they were telling me, and 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 started trying to develop some verbal skills, and and then uh, I said that I signed up to go to another boot camp and take some staff members, 
and uh, the dentist that I met in St. Louis, he was a, uh, a client of Jim and Suzanne DeMolin out in Tiburon, California, and so uh, uh, Jim contacted me contacted me and, and uh, wanted to know if I'd be interested in their services, and he sent me a package of information. He called me a week later and said, well, how do you like my information I sent you? I said, oh, it's wonderful, Mr. DeMolin. I said, this is exactly what I need to get a, a financial plan to get someone taking a look at my practice. And he said, I, I said, I, you know, I'd like to do it next year. I said, I'm, I'm still paying for my boot camp. <laughs> and he, he had the verbal skills that, uh, that I didn't have. And he said, well, you know, we don't want money to – to get in the way of what you want, he said, if, if we could find a way to, to, to get the money out of the question and, and work it into your budget, do you think that's what you want to do? And I said, absolutely. Uh-huh. So we financed it over a year's time. And uh, so uh, he said, okay, cool. here's what you need to do. Uh, I've got two hygiene consultant groups. Uh, I want you to call each one of them. And uh, they're going to want all your practice numbers on your on how many patients you see, how many trophies you do, how many new patient exams. And so I did that, and so uh, uh, I ended up picking one of the hygiene consultants. You know, that's another $15,000, oh. and they financed it through uh, GE Capital Care Credit, you know, for about three years. Yeah. But that was one of the best things I ever did. Oh, yeah. And uh, they came into my office, and, uh, you know, they, they set us up as a total team approach where, uh, you know, you, you've got to have the hygiene program where you're doing complete exams, you're, you're doing all your probings. And, you know, it starts with the hygiene, and then it, and then that helps develop the, uh, the restorative side of the practice. And we continued going to the boot camps. I uh, I got into a couple of mastermind groups. And uh, the, the next fall, I went to the, the Molins uh, annual meeting out in Tiburon. And uh, so I was there meeting a bunch of dentists from California, and they were talking about, oh, we're going down to Baylor and, and, here in, and going to Bill Dickerson doing a veneer course. No kidding. Uh, who's Bill Dickerson, you know? And. They were talking about all this stuff, and then I realized, man, I don't know anything. I've got to get with it. <laughs> so sure enough, I went and listened. To, I went and heard Dickerson in St. Louis, and then uh, I went to David Hornbrook's Over the Shoulder program. And yeah. at this time, uh, uh, Hornbrook and uh, uh, Dorfman and uh, Dickerson all kind of split up, and they formed Pack Live uh, out in uh, University of Pacific in San Francisco. So I took my team and uh, patient, and uh, and we went out there and. Had a prep weekend and learned so much, and then uh, came back a month later. And you know, again, this is one of those things. You know, I, you know, I had some credit card debt, but yep. you know, my practice started transforming. Uh, we got into sedation dentistry, and that really uh, was a big kicker for my practice. Uh, we started. We got into the uh, uh, radio marketing for sedation, and uh, so then we started getting a different type of client came in. You know, in Kentucky. Uh, we lead the nation with people with uh, dentures. No so we, we get so many people that come in and, they, they, you know, they've got 15, 20 uh, rotten teeth and they need so much work and uh, they, they're high fear. And this sedation brought them, brought them to me. No and so, uh, uh, you know, my practice was starting to transform. And, and, the, and the more more I did this, the more I realized I, I've got to get more training. These sedation patients, they want, they, want you to, they want you to do the root canals for them. They want you to do the extractions. So I had, to, I had to go do more root canal training. I had to, you know, do uh, surgical courses where, you know, I could get up to stuff. And uh, so, you know, as we were doing this, we were, you know, we were, we were adding chairs, uh, uh, more hygienists. And, uh, you know, eventually I moved out to a new office in the, uh, uh, November of 2000. Okay. And that is where I am now. Well, we've got eight, eight operatories and four hygienists and two dentists. and oh, and so uh, cool. Uh, so, you know, net, and so in the last five to ten years, we've, we've moved into uh, implants, and we're getting the training with the implants. And you know, it's it's great here in Kentucky because, like I said, we have so many much dental need. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, just because they have dental need, that means they're going to do what you tell them to do. You know, yeah. they've got to want to do it, and you've got to have the verbal skills. And so, my staff and I, you know, we, we've we've had the uh, communication skills through the boot camps and the crown councils and. Uh, you know, I've, I've been out, you know, to uh, John Coyce's program, went to his continuum in Seattle. And, you know, that's what I would tell any young dentist that, uh, you know, you, you need to, you've got a lot of knowledge when you come out of school, but you need to go and, and, and get the advanced training. You know, I, li- I, I like the way you've done your practice management. Now, on your CE, you talked a little bit about Coyce. Tell me a little bit about the CE, some of the CE you've done and what you kind of recommend out there. After I, after I got a bunch of the boot camps and realized I didn't know anything, then, 
you know, I, I had to I had to go take uh, Kit Withers Indo Magic course. Yeah. Went and did that. Went went to the manufacturers courses. Beautiful. Uh, we went and did uh, went and did the Pack Live program with with David Hornbrook. We went out and uh, uh, went to John Coyce. Went through his entire curriculum out there. And and you know, John is such a great teacher. And uh, you know, he, every, everything is research based. And uh, uh, I just can't say enough about about uh, going to John Coyce. Yeah, he's great. And, uh, Oh, he he really is, and uh, we we actually had him at my lab here, man. I had him, and I paid for him personally to come on out here to my lab. And we had a hundred doctors sign up to come watch him, and it was an all day course. And that dude, he started at like seven a.m. and he went to like five six o'clock, and he wanted to keep going. I'm like, no, dude, come on, man, that's good. Let's go eat. <laughs> and he's like, he's such a humble. You know, he's so humble. Uh, when you, did, did did some of your. Uh, uh, Tex go out to his course out in Seattle? Yeah, we've got my general manager and one of my senior ceramists. They kind of went out and got, you know, accredited through. They're going through the whole thing, and he actually, you know, they go on his boat and everything. It's quite the... Yeah, all that, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's fun. I, yeah. I even took my dad with me one time, and uh, my friend in Lexington, Dr. Tony Feck, who uh, he's one of the docs teachers, and uh, uh, he had summarized... Uh, uh, Dental Solutions, and uh, he's kind of we're uh, kind of good friends, and we take a lot of courses together, and uh, so we kind of did, did went out and did about two courses a year, and, and took three or four years to go through the curriculum, and oh, we love going on the boat. I, I love boating, and uh, oh, so, uh, cool. so uh, my my dad uh, he he likes boating, and so I took him out there with me one time, and you know they let him pilot the boat. He, he he's got his captain's license, and oh, you're kidding. And, uh, you know, it, it, but it's intense. You know, you start at 7 a.m. and you go to 5 p.m. Yeah, and, uh, it's nonstop. And, like, I'm not really good when it comes to that stuff. And I'm trying to watch and listen to them for all these dentists. And, man, it just kind of goes right over your head a little bit for some of us knuckleheads. But uh, it's amazing. Right. Some people try to go do it all at once. You know, they'll stay for a whole week and uh, uh, take two courses and then come back and do it real quick. But I... I found for me, I needed to kind of absorb it and go back and practice it some, and, uh, and before I came back and did some more. And and so my daughter, you know, now that she she's out of school, she's she's done her GPR, she's got her sedation permit, uh, uh, she placed some implants while she's in her GPR. But you know, now she knows she needs got to get out and learn the uh, uh, the other stuff. So she's she's going to go to you know Panky or or uh, uh, Dawson or, or, yeah. yep. or Spear or or Dawson and uh, do some over the shoulder programs and uh, actually take some patients because you know it, it takes doing that you know oh yeah and when you come out of school you don't know how to do a full mouth rehab and, and uh, you got to get that training and uh, yep. uh, sometimes sometimes dentists have to you know we we have to uh, you know you come out of school and you got a pretty good ego you got all this knowledge and you're you know you worked hard for four years and you think you know everything but uh, you got to set that aside and realize that you don't and uh, I remember Walter Haley said, you know, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I think that's what happened with me. It was about 10 years before I was ready. Other yeah. than I was just kind of wheels. And, uh, uh, that's so, awesome. Uh, you know, you, you did a lot of education. And I remember one of your old partners, uh, Scott Bridges, man, he's a great guy. But he, he always talks so highly of you. I mean, just it was always education, education, let's do these courses and, you know, look, at it's paying off. I mean, you guys got so many cases in this lab right now, um, and it's from all aspects. I mean, you got implants, you got dentures, you got, you know, high aesthetic cases. We got full upper lower rehabs that we're doing. I got one right now. I, uh, I think we did all the wax ups, and I think we're building the lower out first, and we'll do, you know, cement those, and I think we're doing the upper. And so, man, my hat's off to you, and it just uh, it takes some time in the trenches. And, you know, and uh, like, you know, you know that- yeah, go ahead. Exciting about dentistry, Sean, is that uh, you know we're able to do a lot of different uh, avenues of dentistry. You know, uh, uh, you know we, we get to do the full mouth rehabs, uh, and you can, you know there's different ways to do a rehab. You can rehab them with dentures and implants. Yeah. And uh, you know, we in Kentucky we have a lot of people with dentures, so uh, we, we do uh, we stabilize the dentures with implants if, if they can, and uh, you know we, we use the narrow. Uh, Diameter implants, what they call mini implants, yep. they work on a lot of people, and we use the root form implants. And uh, you know, we've uh, we'll do uh, uh, 
you know, uh, four implants or six implants, whatever whatever we have to do. But, exactly. you know, we do the root canals, we do the veneers, and uh, so it, may, it, may, it makes it nice to be able to do all types of dentistry and, and with so much dental need here in Kentucky that uh, we're able to change a lot of lives. Ah, I bet, you know, and it's just, where did you get any uh, of your education on sink and implants? Anyone in particular? Well, uh, we, with our many implants, we... Uh, uh, had a, uh, a mastermind group I was in. We had uh, uh, Todd Shatkin, who was uh, he's got oh. his own company now. Yeah. Shatkin, he actually did a private uh, training for our mastermind group. Did it up in Philadelphia for us, okay. and uh, Scott and I both went to that. And uh, so that that was kind of a starter. And then you know I've been to different seminars and stuff. But then we uh, uh, went to the Bicon program. We uh, we were in Bicon. Um, uh, my partner and I were up in Bicon this spring at their okay. at their program. Uh, Bicon's a uh, they're a first class outfit. We're really in, and been impressed with them. Uh, we did have done Osteo already with Brady Frank and Tony Feck. Uh, By Whole Horizons, uh, we we like that implant system. And so we, you know, for di- for different situations, we like different systems, and that's and that's nice. You know, it's, it's not a one all uh, one fits all. Uh, my daughter and I and her mother in law, who's a uh, a dentist in Chicago. We're going to uh, Zurich, Switzerland, in September, <laughs> and doing a course up there. That uh, my daughter's mother-in-law. Uh, she's in a study club in Chicago, and the entire study club's going. Oh, how so, cool uh, is that? That's really getting after it, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think the Swiss. Well, you know, it's what keeps you young. You know, that's one thing. Uh, you know, having a, a young partner and a, and a and a daughter as a dentist, you know, it keep, they keep me going. So. Oh man, and you look young. You look like a little Hollywood star, like you're on TV, man. And from what I hear, yeah. you're all over the radio and TV. Is that? Tell me a little bit about your marketing strategy. You, you kind of do a little bit of everything. Tell me a little bit about that. We have a local NBC affiliate here in Paducah, and they had, they used to have a noon call-in show. That, you know, that asked questions, and it was live, and so. Uh, I did a dental segment on there for a couple of years, and then uh, when uh, they decided to make some changes, uh, my father was saying, "You know, you, you, that's been really good. You, you know, you, people look at you as the expert. You're, you've been on this new news show, and so we we came up and did the uh, uh, dental health update with Dr. William Walden as a 30 second <laughs> spot. It was kind of like the old Dr. Art Uline on NBC. Yeah, and uh, we'd have a you know you know we'd say okay. Uh, if you have a tooth and it's not, if you knock your teeth out, here's what you need to do. You know, you need to do this, this, and this, and call your dentist. You know, I, I didn't tell them to call me. I said, you know, always, you know, call your dentist. And, and so we had about, oh, eight or nine of these different 30-second spots, and we rotated those through. And then uh, in 2000, 2001, I had a, uh, a patient who was a local producer, did his own uh, uh, stuff, and he said, would you uh, ever want to do some commercials? I said, sure. So we've got a series of commercials going, and because I had I had done radio with the uh, uh, sedation, okay, and uh, I can remember I can remember still remember the, the opening sentence, and it went you know if going to the dentist is your greatest fear, you need to know you're not alone. Uh-huh. Hi, I'm Doctor Walden, <laughs> and and those were a minute commercials, and those were tremendous for us. Oh, but uh, you know, the radio kind of uh, slowed up, and we got into TV and. Uh, then we've, uh, you know, I did direct mail. I was a, you know, I was a client of Jim DeMullins out in Tiburon, and uh, Chris Ad is located in Marin County out there, and we use Chris Ad Marketing, okay. which is direct mail, which is not quite as effective in our area. We're kind of boundaried by the Ohio River and uh, uh, across the river, but uh, uh, just last last spring, my partner and I went out, we shot two different infomercials. Uh, with Randy Alvarez, and uh, those have been working really well. Yeah. We're running a... Uh, both of those right now, and uh, they're geared towards implants and sedations. And, you know, the amazing thing, people come in thinking they want an implant, but yet it may be they, they're doing a, a six-unit bridge or a three-unit bridge or a partial. So it, they may not, you know, be a candidate for the implant, but you, you do the other dentistry too. So uh, uh, that's been very effective for them. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, Randy Alvarez, I know him. He's a big guy, a big TV personality out here. And uh, so, yeah, man, you're doing a lot of stuff with our California boys out here, man. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's just so cool. It makes it exciting, and you know that's one thing about uh, you know you can tell young dentists you're coming out of school. A dentist wears so many different hats. You know, you yep. uh, 
work side by side with your dental assistant, so you're a coworker, but yet you're at the same time you're a manager, and then you're a leader. And Absolutely. so to, to be able to put all that together, it, you know, it, it takes a lot of work, and and you you got to have some professional people. You know, we we have different people that you know have an employee handbook. You know, so it's not it's not just doing the dentistry, but yep. it's managing people. You got to know the business side of it. You know, you, you don't want to just uh, leave things for chance. You, yeah. You know, you, you, so we we see patients four days a week here, and some of my friends, you know, I'm, I'm used to it now, but they said you just work four days a week. I said no. I said. I see patients four days a week. I work on the practice the other days. You know? Exactly. It's seven days a week, 24-7 when you own your own company. It's like, it's pretty amazing. Well, what about with your staff, man? Tell me real quick about your practice. How many ops again? You got like, what, eight ops and uh, how many hygienists? Tell me tell me a little breakdown of your practice. Yeah, we got eight ops, four hygienists, uh, and uh, we've got four people at our front desk. And uh, uh, so you know, we... Uh, our, our new patient exam is a two-hour block, and uh, you know, it, and we learned this from Mac Lee. Mac, uh, uh, you know, he, he uses his uh, staff to, to collect data, and so the patient will come in, and you know, we introduce ourselves and, along with our hygienist, and uh, you know, uh, we tell them the you know, hygienist they're going to you know collect some data for us, get some pictures, get some X-rays, they're going to write numbers down, and we'll be back in. So, you know, they they spend a lot of time. Uh, uh, with the patient going through the periodontal aspects, but they they go through the restorative aspects. You know, the, they they don't diagnose, but they you know they, they'll sit there and say, if you got missing teeth, you know, with missing teeth, typically Doctor Walden can offer you know these different types of options for missing teeth. Absolutely, and they'll, they'll go through you know implants or crowns. So we do not not sure if you're a candidate, but that, when Doctor Walden comes in, he will determine that for you. That's so and cool. And so they they develop a great rapport. Yeah, and we we take our staff. You know, with us to go training. We we love taking the dental assistants. I'd love to bring them out to the lab sometime and you know let them get to meet some of the techs. You know, look. look uh, some we'd of love that. <laughs> We'll help them with the temps. I mean, a lot of times when the doctors bring their assistants, they go straight to the temporary department, and we really kind of show them, you know, hey, use this disc, use this burr, use this solution to glaze it, and, you know, light cure it, and it just, like, it makes it night and day for them. They're, like, so excited. But even, too, for you to see, you know, your ceramist that's been doing your work for 12-plus years, you know, we've never, you've never met them, and it'd be so neat to get you out here and see them. So we'd love to have you out here, and, you know, hey, I got a big old boat, too, and if you're dead, Dad's a captain. He can still do it. We'll let him. We'll let him drive us around and uh, whatever. Because I'll be drinking the beers. I, I don't drive my boat. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's seven. great. I'd love to do that sometime. Now my dad, he doesn't travel so much now. He's getting a little older. So, uh, but you know, yeah, meeting the text where you can where you can put a face to a name and, yeah. a, and a voice on a phone. You know, we try to send a lot of digital photos to you guys. Yes, where you do. For the lab tech, can you know? You know, they've got models in front of them, but if they can put a face to that model, you know, they have a better connection. Oh, so. absolutely. They love it. And, uh, and even the doctors, too, the few that when they do come out, they, they return. You know, the next year they'll come out again, and then it's like it's just like a reunion, and everyone gets real excited. And it's neat because, you know, we're kind of an isolated we're a lab, but most of our doctors are out of state. And, you know, it's just – and the ones that are in California are kind of mostly northern California. We don't have a lot of local doctors that use us, and it's just – it's kind of weird. I don't know why, and it's just something. Um, it's neat when they come in and they see our facility, and it's just kind of neat. We we really love it, and um, so yeah, you're definitely. And we got some CE stuff coming up too, and we're gonna get it all hashed out for the end of this year coming up. But um, yeah, we got a lot of stuff that should be coming in the uh, around the corner here, and we got to get you out here for sure, man. So what about what's the latest piece of equipment you've bought in your practice? We, we've got a uh, we've got a plain mecca uh, cone beam. There you go. And, <laughs> and uh, we've, we've had that a couple years, I guess. And, and uh, uh, you know, before uh, doing implants, you know, we would, uh, you know, take a pan mm -hmm. and uh, you know, look at models and stuff. And 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 we were that was okay. You know, you know people have been doing implants for a long time without cone beams, yep. but uh, now it just, it just gives you a lot more knowledge. You're looking at the bone density, and uh, so it, that's a that's a big help to us. But uh, you know. That's a good question. You know, I was talking to my daughter. She was interviewing with some other dentist up in Louisville, and uh, she said, "Yeah, they got all the they got the cone beams and all. You know, got the digital scanners and all the stuff." And and you know, and I would say for young dentists, that stuff's great, but 
just because you have that stuff, not, well, have you doing the dentistry? You know, you got exactly. you got to learn how to do it. You got to learn how to communicate with the patients, and you, you can't you can't tell the patients what they need. You get you got to find out what they want and give them what they want. Absolutely. And and so you know that that that's the key to it. So yeah, having the bells and whistles are nice, but that's not going that's not going to make you uh, a great dentist. You know, l- learning the techniques and how to do the things and. Uh, so, you know, I think sometimes, you know, the young dentists can, can, uh, get in trouble, uh, where, you know, you they get a real good, uh, dental salesman after them and, you know, oh, get them yeah. a, a, a lot of debt. And, uh, so, you know, one part of, uh, dentistry is, is managing cash flow. Absolutely. Any business, your business, my business, yep. you know, we're small businesses that, you know, generate nice, nice money. But you got to manage cash flow, and you can imagine how somebody like a GE or a, or a, a Continental or somebody, you know, you know, they got a hundred thousand employees and they got billions of dollars, but they can burn through cash really fast. Oh you know? yeah, and you got to be frugal, especially when you're starting off. I mean, I would do like you, like the first ten years, you know, get by with what you can on the basic equipment because that's not going to bring you more dentistry. You got to just do what you got to do with the basics and invest in your education and just put your time in. Uh, just you know, learn as much CE as you can, practice management courses, learn all of that and spend that money on that because that'll come back tenfold to you. You go buy all these bells and whistles, man, they ain't going to do nothing for you. And, like, you know, a lot of guys get in, and I did the same thing trying to get into the digital revolution back 10 years ago, and that stuff, uh, you can't even sell it for the weight of it. And, you know, I got $100,000 3D printers that are obsolete now, you know, that are four years old, and I, I can't even sell it for scrap. I mean, it's just nuts. So hold off and wait. And, you know, I think some of the digital scanners are kind of working out pretty neat now impression scanners and stuff that's kind of neat stuff but again old school impressions you know still works really really well and uh it's just something um yeah to keep uh keep you know and that's one thing with me i had a cfo that that my biggest hire was getting a cfo about a year into this and she kind of just you know you can't buy nothing until you know we get to a certain level and it was years before we could really get anything and thank god for that because i like to buy things and you get those salesmen coming in and oh it sounds great i got a i got a printer for my partial dentures and it's just not really plan you know working out as good as i thought and they kind of pushed me to get into this and you know, I'm doing kind of beta test on this stuff, and it's just a it's a different concept for what it's doing. But um, you know, got a little on un- un- you know got in a little early on that one. But um, you know, I think it'll work out. But it's just something for these young guys starting off for sure. That's just great advice. You know, keep your nose to the grindstone, just get in the trenches, and uh, you know, watch your money, man, because money will come. It'll come down the line, and uh, it just you got to put your dues in, and it just takes time, and uh, you know. Uh, then people start talking about you and you know you get more patience how far are you booked out aren't you booked out pretty far you guys are pretty busy always aren't you <laughs> yeah, we're busy but you know that's one thing jim the told us he said you don't want to have a capacity issue uh-huh. if you get where you're booked out so far that means you got a capacity problem you need to expand you could have another room get a, you see, employees don't cost you money they make you money yeah exactly and so if, if somebody calls in we want to get them in within the next day Yep. Now, we may not be able to do the actual dental treatment, but we don't want people to have to wait. Exactly. So we're going to, we're going to, we, 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 Mac Lee taught us this. He says, don't let an emergency be the thorn in your side. Some people get so mad, oh, we got an emergency. Gosh. Yeah. He said, get them in and, and, and look at them. And you may just do a palliative treatment. You may put them on an antibiotic, but you, then you're, they're your friend. Yeah, so exactly. don't let that be your enemy. You Absolutely. know, so we, we want to have a capacity, but we always want to be able to get people in every day. Yeah, that's so good. No, that's just great advice, dude. That's on the money. So what about as a lab? Are we doing okay for you, man? We uh, getting uh, knocking it out of the park? Are we doing uh, so-so? Tell me about how our lab's doing for you. <laughs> no, I mean, very rarely do we have to send something back. You know, uh, I think we've got a good, you know, communication. You know, I always want it to be where, you know, if, if I can give you something else or you can, if, if, I, if you, for you to do the best job you can, you got my permission to say, "Hey, Dr. Walden, can can you do a new impression? Can you can you give us some more reduction? Because that's only going to help the patient. Yep. And 
you know, so, you know, I want to be able to give you the best that I can. And so the only way to do it is we have open communication. You're not going to, you're not going to make me mad saying you need something else because you want to make it better. Absolutely. And, uh, and if, and if, if there's something I want, I should be free to, you know, ask you. And I think we've got a good, you know, line of communication. Oh, we do totally. And you know what? You're just a dream to work with. And dude, I can't thank you enough for your time, man. I know you got a patient. I hear him in the back office. They're going, come on, Dr. Walden. But dude, thank you so much. God bless you and your family. And man, if there's anything I can ever do ever, just please ask for me. And I can't thank you enough for all the work and just uh, just the great attitude that you have, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean, for the kind words, and it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I look forward to a great future. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Walden, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Dental Love Podcast Show this week. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or search the Dental Love Podcast on iTunes for our weekly feed. Don't forget to visit KeatingDentalArts.com slash promo for exclusive offers. Keating Dental Arts is a full-service dental laboratory, and we're nationwide. We'd love for you to send us a case so we can show you the Keating difference. If you dig what you heard, please leave a review on iTunes, and we'll be back next week.